at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers, let us acknowledge our sins. We may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, the Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. As we venerate the most holy name of Jesus, mercifully grant us, Lord, that savoring its sweetness in this life, we may be filled with everlasting joy in our heavenly homeland. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep the co my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abraham, As for your wife Sarai, do not call her Sarai. Her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall give rise to nations, and rulers of peoples shall issue from him. Abraham prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can Sarah give birth at ninety-nine? Then Abraham said to God, Let but Ishmael live on by your favor. God replied, Nevertheless, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son, and you shall name him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve chieftains, and I will make him make of him a great nation. But my covenant I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abraham. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed See how the Lord blesses those who fear Him. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord blesses you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came down from the mountain, a great crowd followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one. But go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the hotel room mass along our journey. <laughs> Something that uh, uh, doesn't happen often in one's life, but as a priest you travel, you got to do what you got to do. So I have half mass will travel in my bag. <laughs> you never know what you can pull out of a small bag. An entire church can unravel. Today we're celebrating the uh, votive mass of the holy name of Jesus. Uh, because names are very important in scripture. Names are to be overlooked. Uh, today we have Sarah's name being changed. Uh, her original name was Sarai, which meant princess. And God says, don't call her Sarai princess. Call her Sarah or Sarah, as we like to say in English, <laughs> call her Sarah. What does Sarah mean? Queen. Don't call her princess. Call her queen. I oftentimes tell that to, uh, to guys before they get married. Don't call her princess. Call her queen, because she's in charge. <laughs> and learn two very, two very important words. Yes, dear. <laughs> However, but, but her name was important because she wasn't just going to be a princess. She was going to be a queen who was going to be then a mother of many kings, which would spring from her beginning with King, uh, well actually Saul would be the first king, um, and then with David and so forth. So Sarah really becomes the mother of nations. Um, you know, and Abraham's kind of laughing about it. He's like, and, you know, <laughs> can, uh, and, he, and he does laugh, which is kind of interesting because he, he laughs and says, can I really have a child at 99 years old? You know, he's 96 at this point, Sarah's 86. Um, he's 97 when Isaac is born, and Sarah's 87 when, when Isaac's born. So he laughs. And a year later, when God visit, visits a, uh, Abraham, and it's the three visitors, and uh, you know, Abraham is like amazed that God has come to visit him, and, and he bows to the ground, and Sarah's making food, getting things ready, you know, to be busy about things, and God says to Abraham, when I visit you this time next year, uh, Sarah will be with child, and she laughs. And then when Sarah comes out of the tent, God says to Sarah, Sarah, is anything impossible for God? And she says, no kind of nervously, I think. And then uh, then God says to her, then why did you laugh? She says, I didn't laugh. And God says, but you did laugh. Uh, which is important, because the name of their son, Isaac, means laughter. Not only did Isaac, uh, Abraham laugh that he would have a child at 97, but Sarah laughed at 87 that she would have a child. So they both laughed, and so their child's name is laughter. That God gives them such joy in their late years, God fulfills his promise. It's not just the promise of having this child late in years, because I don't know if somebody who was 97 would be laughing if they had a kid at that age. <laughs> you might be crying more than laughing, you know. Um, but there's this, it's the fulfillment of the promise of God, that God promised Abraham years earlier when he was in his 70s, that he was going to be the father of nations that kings would spring from him. When God said, count the numbers of the stars in the sky if you can, so shall your descendants be. Count the sands on the shore if you can, so shall they. count the dust if you can, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham's like, okay, ain't got no kid yet. <laughs> you know, I believe. So this waiting for 20 years for God, in his very late old years, uh, for God to fulfill that promise that this child will be the child of promise whom kings shall spring from. But even more than that, that from this child the world would be blessed. You know, it's very important to look back to our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. He comes not just to bless and fulfill the promises to Israel, 
But the promises made to Abraham, which was not just to the descendants of Abraham, but was the promise to bless the whole world. You know, which is why, you know, Matthew, we talked about this yesterday in the car, uh, Matthew will trace Jesus' lineage back to uh, Abraham because he wants to focus on uh, the, uh, the message of the, to the people of Israel, that God has fulfilled his promise he made to Abraham. And, and Matthew is a Jew. So Matthew's focused on, on all the stories that are going to show Jesus coming to the Jews, fulfilling the promises to Abraham. Where Luke, being a pagan convert, is going to take you through Our Lady's lineage all the way back to Adam. Because God is fulfilling his promises to everyone that he made through Abraham. Because God promised to bless the world through Abraham. So when Isaac is born, he's named Laughter. Because there was great joy and rejoicing. The word laughter, we can, you know, we like to laugh and so forth, but there's a certain joy in laughter. And it's the joy that the Lord is pointing towards. The joy that through this child given to Abraham and Sarah will become the child through whom his lineage, God will become man. That through this beautiful lineage, God will become man. I have to tell you a funny story though with when God changed Abraham's name. His name was not originally Abraham, it was Abram. Right? And God says to him, I no longer call you Abram, I call you Abraham. Well, back when I was a very young friar, we had a friar from Guam living with us. And uh, Brother Tudo, we called him. Antonine was his name, but his nickname was Tudo. And so as Tudo was reading, is going through the scriptures, and he's supposed to be reading the changing of Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham. And he keeps reading Abram as Abraham. So he's reading, you know, God said to Abraham, I'll no longer call you Abraham, for now on you shall be called. And he realized his mistake. So, so God said to Abraham, I'll no longer call you Abraham, for now I shall call you Abraham. <laughs> Trying to emphasize this H <laughs> in order to cover his mistake of calling him Abram. But even Abraham is father of nations. Abraham does not just become the father of the Jewish people, but through the blessing of Isaac, becomes the father of all people. And God who comes to each and every one of us through this blessing of Abraham. And we see this even today in the gospel with our Lord Jesus Christ. He comes down from the mountain and this leper approaches him. And the leper is so beautiful because he's recognizing that Jesus is more than any other man. And what does Jesus' mean name? Yahshua means God saves. And this man is in need of being saved. He's being eaten away by leprosy, which means he had to live outside the camp, was not allowed to be touched, had to ring, you know, let people know when he was coming by, yell out, unclean, a man living in isolation and alone. So there's the physical, emotional, and even spiritual suffering because he could not go to synagogue, he could not go to temple, he, he was, had to live outside lest he infect the camp. And so he had to run around running unclean. And he comes before our Lord and does him homage. So this leper heard something about Jesus that made him do him homage. Now homage is interesting. He didn't just show him respect as you would another human. He does him homage, which is something you do to God. And so he's coming to the one whose name means God saves. The one who was promised by Abraham by God to Abraham, whom the world would be blessed. And this man is filled with leprosy, and he says, If you will it, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I do will it, and touches him. Something that was forbidden to do to, to, to a, a leper. You don't touch lepers lest you become unclean. But Jesus can't be made unclean. He's the great purifier. God saves is his name, Yahshua. He's come to save, and in that touching of that man, he could have just willed it, but he chose to touch it, to break through the barrier that this man had been living in, to break through that prison he was living in, to not just will it verbally, but to actually touch him with the mighty hand of God, so that by the hand of God, he would be made clean and experience the powerful, loving, healing touch of the one whose name means God saves, saving him from his leprosy, saving him from the certain death. You know, he's told to go and show himself to the priest and offer the sacrifices and prescribe them the law, which he does not do. <laughs> Instead, he just goes around telling everyone what Jesus did for him. He does he, these guys, some of the guys when they were healed, they never did what Jesus told them to do. <laughs> they just told everybody everything. And I'm not going to, I'm not gonna go offer a bunch of pigeons and a bunch of coats and lamb I'm just gonna go tell whatever it happened. <laughs> and so he receives this beautiful touch of the powerful hand of God. 
the blessing given to Abraham is being shown in these physical individual moments of Jesus' life, of these people that he's healing, which are real events which symbolize a greater universal event, right? Because the greatest universal event is when God actually does save by the gift of himself on the cross to cure us all of the leprosy of sin, delivering us from that leprosy that kept us separate from God, that leprosy that kept us un be un unable to touch God, that leprosy that kept us from being able to enter the presence of God, that leprosy of sin that isolated us from God. But Jesus comes to save us from the spiritual leprosy that delivers us from those imprisonments, from those isolations, to bring us so close to himself that we become one with him, particularly the gift of the Holy Eucharist. I've often said this at the parish, I love the word reconciliation, right? Because this is your cilia right here, your eyelashes. You bring your cilii together where you reconcile. You bring cilii together, that's what reconciliation means. So to be reconciled to God means God takes your face and brings it so close to his face that your eyelashes touch his eyelashes. So it's kind of like it picks that baby being put so close to the parent's face that the eyelashes are touching. That's what it means to be reconciled to God. And so God promises through Abraham that he will bless the world that he will create a universal covenant with the world, that there'll be the covenant cut in the flesh of circumcision up until the coming of Christ, and the covenant will be cut in the flesh of Christ, and through Christ the world is truly blessed, both Jews and non-Jews, because the world has become to be blessed through Christ, God made man, who now touches us through the sacraments and brings us deliverance and healing from all those things that keep us from him beautiful today, this name of Jesus, Yahshua, God saves. So as we reflect upon the power of names, <laughs> we think about Abraham, this father of nations who truly has become the father to countless. God kept his promises. Here we are, uh, 4,000 late years later, still talking about Abraham as father Abraham. No one can count the amount of descendants that Abraham has had, spiritually and physically, no one can count them. They're as numerous as the stars in the sky, the sand in the seashore. Okay, God made that promise to him. Check. Made. Promise made, promise kept. Was that big phrase for a while ago? <laughs> you know, I very much remember heard that phrase being said. Like, that's God. Promises made, promises kept. God kept all of his promises, right? God would bless the Jewish people through him. Check. God became man. And he gave himself in sacrifice to save his people promise to bless the world through this descendant. Check. Promise made, promise kept. Jesus offers himself not just for the Jewish people, but for all nations and all peoples. When the Holy Spirit comes down upon the apostles, they're given the fires of the tongue, they're given the gift of languages to speak to all nations, to all peoples, and that promise is made that salvation is now open to all who come to him through the sacraments. Promise of the cutting of the covenant in the flesh. Abraham cuts the covenant in the flesh through circumcision, but the covenant ultimately is made in the flesh of Christ, when the covenant is cut in his hands, his feet, and his side, which is why his wounds never heal, because it's an eternal covenant cut in the flesh of Christ. So we look upon him, we know his promises have been kept. And he stands before the Father, bearing his wounds in the testimony for his love for us. So today, May the Lord grant us the grace to have trust in the powerful name of Jesus. Trust in that name that makes heaven rejoice and hell shake. Trust in that beautiful name in which we have our salvation. The beautiful name of Jesus. May God bless you and Mary keep. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For the real goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, with real goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, Almighty Father, to accept our offerings in the name of Jesus. For we are confident that we shall receive whatever we ask in your Son's name, as he himself with such kindness promises lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, the Bishop of this diocese, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. There is no other name under heaven given among the human race by which we must be saved. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ.
Oremos. Grant us in your mercy, O Lord, we pray, that in these sacred mysteries we may do worthy homage to the Lord Jesus. For it is your will that by his name every knee should bend, and in him all people find salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael the Archangel, Angel, defend us in battle. Be our, our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May, May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.